and you are told the unit, the bag of rice for each rice that you want to buy, a cost is equal to 20. Then the pack of soda drinks, you are told a cost is 15 cities. But you are to spend the 300 to buy these two items. Your concern is how do I distribute the 300 either evenly or whichever appropriation to be able to exhaust the 300 cities. So problem is how many should you buy for rice? How many should you buy for what? So that that is the problem you have given the 300 Ghana cities. Therefore, because we don't know how many to buy at this point for rice and for soda, we are saying that define that as your decision what variables. And you have only two items here, rice and what? Soda. So we are saying that let rice, the number of rice that you don't know to buy represent X1. The number of soda you don't know, soda packs you don't know to be what? X what? Two. It is clear up to this point. What you have just done is called defining the decision word variable. So let X1 and X2 be the number of bags of rice to buy and the pack of soda drinks to buy respectively. Once I know that, I should be able to go further to write the equation for this problem. And by that, I said that every decision variable, we have to know the coefficient. The coefficient can be zero or infinity, given the problem that you have at hand. In this case, we are told the unit cost or a bag of rice will cost us 20 cities. And a pack of soda will cost us what? 15 what? Cities. If I have 300 to spend, how many should I buy for rice? How many should I buy for what? Pack of what? Soda. And that brought, brings us to what we did here. Unit cost for rice, unit bag of rice is 20 cities. A pack of soda is what? 15 cities. What will be the total bags of rice will I buy? It is the unit cost for bag of rice times what? The unknown number of what? Rice that I'm buying. So we are saying that this is the unit cost for bag of rice, 20 cities, times the decision what? Variable. This 20 is the coefficient of X1. Plus, I'm giving 15 cities for pack of what? Soda. How many of pack of soda am I buying? I don't know the number. So I represent it as what? X2. So that let X2 represent the number of packs of soda to buy. Therefore, the total number of, the total amount of soda that I'm going to buy, if I know the decision variable is going to be the unit cost times what? The total, which is 15 times what? X2. If I multiply these two and add it to this guy, I have been given 300 to spend everything. So this total should be equal to the 300 cities that what? I have. Is it clear now? This is everybody must follow. This is just the beginning of the journey of the shadow of quantitative methods. Hmm? Is this clear? Yes, sir. you understand sir. this, yes, sir. This, should be, this should be the preamble to answer or to formulate all linear programming problems that I have. Okay. If I'm able to write this, Okay, and I want to solve for X1 and X2. I can use matrix to do that. But let's look at this example for the next one. Your mobile phone provider, Django Mobile, charges you, charges you 
zero point zero seven per minute of talk, and also zero point zero zero five per text, and zero point zero two per minute of internet you have used. If your total monthly phone bill is T, you are asked to formulate a linear equation to rep represent your monthly word mobile word charges. Like we said, we know the unit cost for mobile what? Charges for what? Talk. Which is this. We also know that for text, given as this. We also know that for unit internet charge as what? Do. But we don't know how much we are spending or how many minutes talk I have used. How many texts have I sent in the course of the month? What is the bundle of internet I have what used? Therefore, since I don't know this, we are saying that let the per minute usage for talk be what? X1. The number of texts that I don't know be what? X2. And the total internet usage bundle to be what? X3. Therefore, this will give us the amount of usage that we have for the month. Okay? So therefore, if I want to write an equation for this, I am saying that since I know this as the number of per minute talk, my total cost for talking is going to be 0 0.07 times what? X1 plus the number of what? Text messages I am offered. My total is going to be the unit of talk, the unit of text times the number of what? Text X2. The next one is going to be what? The total number of internet band usage I have, which is this, times the unit of what? Usage, 0 0.02 times what? X3. If I add all these three, they should give me my total number of what? Bills, which is what? T for the month. This is simplified for your consumption. I hope it is clear for now. There are other examples that we can give. When you get a slide, you see a lot of examples. And I'm expecting that you use them. In order to solve the linear equation that we have formulated, which is this guy, I should be able to transform this whole equation into a form of what? Matrix. Once I've done that, I'll be able to solve the problem. Please remember that we said that each element is in a row and at the same time what? A column. So look at this carefully. You have this guy here. Okay, another guy here. This is, how many rows do we have here? This whole equation constitutes how many rows? Row one. One row. And how One many row. columns? Three columns. Good. I should be able to convert this guy here into a matrix form. That is where we come to say that a system of a linear equation can be represented in this form. Okay, so I have A11, which will be the coefficient of what? The decision variable. In row one, column what? One. A12 one, is again the coefficient of that the second decision variable in row one, column what? Three. Plus all the way to A1n, Xn, should be equal to what? The resources. B1, B2, Bm are what? My resources. So, like we did in the first guy, in the first example, we have 20x1 plus 15x2 is equal to what? 300. I should be able to represent this in the form of what? Matrix. Means that I will have 
20x1 plus 15x2 is equal to what? 300. If I want to write this in a matrix form, I should separate all the decision variable at one side, all the coefficients at one side, and all the resources at one side, given that I will have 20, 15 times x1, x2 should be equal to what? 300. That is what I have done. I've converted the whole system of linear equation into a matrix form. The other one says that we have 0.07x1, 0.005x2 plus 0.01x3, if that is correct, equals to what? P. I should be able to separate these guys into what? Their respective what? Arrangement in the form of what? Matrix. So I have 0.07. Zero point, this is in a row, so you do them in a row. Zero point, this will be x1, x2, x3 equals to what? T. Please, I hope it is okay. This is just an, a, a matrix in the one row. In the next discussion, next week, I'm going to look at how do we uh, convert all systems of linear equation into a matrix form and we will solve it. So to end the class, go through the rest of the examples we have here, try and familiarize yourself again in detail how to formulate, how to define, first of all, a decision variable and how to write an equation given the problem that we have. On that note, I will end the class here and continue 